What's happening, QAC TV? And we are zooming around the studio. This time you've got Chris instead of Bruce and Mandy. Um, but I'm here, and I'm here with the Eastern Shore Performance Center. I'm here with Kendra and Evan Eichler. How you guys doing? We're good. doing awesome. Good. How you doing, Chris? <laughs> good. It, it, it's good to see you guys. You know, it's it's nice we got this whole setup. Um, you guys have been doing Zoom for for a little bit now because because the center's closed, but you guys are really have really taken that this this time to kind of go virtual. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously everyone knows the events that have taken place. So um, we kind of came to the realization uh, overnight that the gym had pretty much burnt to the ground, and we were going to be like a one hundred percent virtual company. So um, yeah, like we've been. Uh, we, we immediately, like, I'm sure everybody, you know, uh, scrambled to try and find the best way to interact with uh, our community and Zoom um, uh, obviously stood out. So I'm sure they're having uh, some interesting times over there at headquarters. But uh, yeah. yeah, right off the hop, we um, did a lot of communication through there. We've uh, started running live classes seven days a week through uh, Zoom and uh, yeah, just kind of took off from there. Well, so, you know, obviously it takes a little bit of troubleshooting. Fortunately, we live together, so we have a lot of times to troubleshoot. Um, so the biggest thing we did was we anticipated the shutdown and we went straight to a Facebook private group um, where I started uploading all of our members so that when it did get shut down, the Zoom links could be posted um, through a private page. And so we started kind of focusing on that group and, you know, tackling that and making sure that they had what they needed right off the hop. So they get the links through the private ESPC virtual programming page um, on Facebook. Uh, while that was going on, that was our initial goal to kind of get the content to them. But in the process, we've then now taken an opportunity to use this as um, a, a chance for us to kind of, uh, I wouldn't say upgrade, but change our business platform to create this additional opportunity to go virtual for people who want our programming but don't live nearby so we have begun or i shouldn't say we it's the collective we but it really is evan um, have begun the process of creating a completely online library with uh videos uh uploading to youtube uh and getting that stuff on the site to have a members only page uh so that it'll be all completely online but you know it's baby steps right so the biggest thing was making sure that they had access to the information and then on our end we're, we're doing all the you know, it's so easy to see a video, but there's a lot of work that goes into it in terms of creating the, the intros and the outros and the editing and the uploading and the downloading and all that stuff. So Evan's kind of quarterback that. And meanwhile, while we're taking care of the kids and all this, this new uh, jobs that we've got in terms of being uh, teachers and, uh, you know, nonstop chefs and stuff, we're not chauffeuring so much, but right now we're definitely putting on a couple different hats at the same time that we weren't always anticipating, so... What have you guys learned about like really tailoring it to, hey, you got to use your everyday home equipment or if you don't have equipment, like how have you guys found uh, new ways of kind of teaching people how to use stuff that's around them, stuff like that? Well, basically, um, we've kind of looked at it uh, almost in three facets. So yeah, we have the people who have no equipment. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, programming that can cater to them. Then we have athletes that, um, like, that our athletes have kind of come in and taken some of the equipment that we've had. So they have minimal equipment. Mm -hmm. So we have programs that kind of involve that. And then there are the programs that are uh, kind of tool specific. So we do have a, a brute force sandbag program running right now and kind of a basic C3, which is our condition challenge compete program, basic dumbbells, barbells, um, uh, benches, uh, et cetera. So there's kind of, no matter what you have access to, we kind of have a, uh, um, uh, a prescription uh, for for that can cater to you. So that's kind of where we've taken it. And you have some kind of like equipment, like loan out program as well? So with our monthly members, what we did was we um, let them come in and have access to, uh, we didn't limit the amount of equipment, but I think most people respectfully took what they needed because there were so many of them that needed it. And they all got a little bit of what they needed in terms of like slam balls or a bar or a mat or a jumper, just basic stuff. Um, uh, we have ceased the loaner program. Um, now we're just gone to a virtual online membership where they can join the monthly membership club. And they just don't have access to the equipment. Um, right now we know that, you know, we have disassembled our gym as best as we can. So we have been trying to focus at least on my end with the, uh, workout like a girl fit camp, trying to focus on a little bit more body weight today. Our live zoom class used, um, four pieces of equipment with a ton of modifications, which we do in general, but then the rest is all body weight. So I'm, I'm trying to really focus on having to cover that ground where they don't need as much equipment um, as they would say in a live actual in the gym class, 
but focus on the things that we can do. And yeah, like you said, using some things around the house instead of a box, uh, a box jump, they can use a coffee table, um, you know, chairs are, are a great tool, anything elevated, uh, just kind of being, thinking outside the box, loading up their kids, book bags with uh, actually loading them up with books. Um, I even joked around about, you know, squatting a small child if need be, you know, so things like that. It didn't work so well today. We had uh, a, a sandbag chest pass and I said, well, don't throw a child, at least not yet. Although they're talking about summer school, so who knows? Maybe there, there might be a couple of kids getting chucked around. <laughs> now, we can't let you guys go without discussing Rowan's run. Um, how did the second annual run go? Uh, amazing. Really? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, you know, ramping as we kind of got closer and closer, there was, uh, I mean, a growing concern that, you know, can we pull this thing off? And, uh, um, you know, it was way bigger than it was last year. And then with the events that have taken place, we obviously wanted to make sure that people were still able to have a great experience regardless of if we could get together or not. So Kendra kind of quarterbacked that and, and, and definitely hit it out of the park. I will say the, the key to Rowan's run this year was the uh, introduction of Rowan's run ambassadors, where our goal was to have 21 ambassadors. Um, they would be team member one. They would have the uh, ability to kind of bring on other 20 athletes. So there'd be 21 people on a team and they all paid $21 to, to basically register for a virtual run. And collectively our goal was uh, $9,200 if all 21 teams were filled. We ended up having 24 teams and a ton of donations that were not part of a team. And so we raised over $10,600 for Ruby's Rainbow, which is the nonprofit uh, organization out in Texas that provides uh, higher education learning for individuals and young adults with Down syndrome. Um, and Rowan is our daughter and she has Down syndrome and we want the same opportunities for her to be able to seek higher education. And we just thought it'd be a great nonprofit to be involved in. We are going to reschedule the live event when uh, things are a little bit more certain in terms of time. So if you're watching, be on the lookout for, for a new date where we can all kind of get together and, and do a 3.21 mile run. But in the meantime, the cause was served and we are very, very happy with that. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, where can people like, this is the time to plug you know, where can people find out about all the stuff that has to do with the Eastern shore performance center? My God. Okay. So we have Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook is Eastern Shore Performance Center.com or ESPC. You could uh, look that up. Same thing on Instagram. Uh, right now uh, we've been juggling trying to get the website up because we uh, kind of had to put it in fast gear, getting that moving, especially with the monthly members page. But in terms of programming, I run workout like a girl fit camps. Um, workout like a girl.com is my website. Uh, Evan runs AI sport conditioning as well as warriors of tomorrow. And they're all kind of housed under the main hub of Eastern shore performance center.com. So that would probably be the best landing place to go there. And if anyone was interested in a monthly membership, um, they could check us out through, we have uh, an app through the app store and Google play. And that's, uh, listed as Eastern shore performance center, uh, center is S or sorry, CTR because center was too long <laughs> so to be able to look it up but if anyone any act, uh, interest in getting involved with the virtual websites uh for the training they could just uh, purchase the monthly membership uh get access to the page and the workouts were there and then as we shift over into our online platform um, there would be instructions on how to get that to log into the uh, members only page another uh, uh kind of component to that is um we also uh are affiliated with uh, brute force sandbag so we are um, uh, the second uh, brute force training center uh, and as such we have uh, access uh, to a plethora of resources uh, through them so we have for our members um, uh, made available all the training plans uh, that brute force training has and I oversee all the uh, the human performance and education platforms so we're pretty lucky to have that um, that pillar as well to add and throw into this um, our athletes have uh, all, all, quite a few of them have taken advantage of actually getting a bag um, and they've been so good to kind of put a whole ton of equipment aside for us so that um, our athletes can can get that stuff. So um, it adds another layer of, you know, that uh, availability and, and, and resources and 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 just some something a little bit different, too. So um, we're definitely doing the best uh, we can with what we got. And we're really happy to have some like uh, brute force sandbags uh, to help us uh, kind of through these uh, interesting times. I would like to say one thing, if it's okay. Go We've been ahead. doing filming here inside the studio, and I just want to give a little shout out to uh, Nadie Gray, who is our, what do they call film? 
champion champion uh, awesome awesome he's been coming out <laughs> and uh adding a lot of his uh skills and making our videos look cool so uh, if you follow myself or evan on facebook uh, or instagram we release a lot of videos uh some of which include some of evan's training for the tactical games um and things like that so it's it's kind of cool to have some young uh talent here from the eastern shore working with us especially during right now we're all kind of pulling together and helping each other out well thanks so much for joining us today evan Kendra, thank you so much um it's it's been a pleasure zooming with you, um, you know, as we, since this is a new way of life. So it's been a pleasure, you know, getting this new way of life started with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, well, thanks so much. No, thank you.